Oh, I might have to jump around. No, it's working. It's working. Um, okay, well, thanks, Heather, and thanks, Jill, and thanks to all the, the organizing committee, the steering committee, done a huge amount of work to get us here today. I really appreciate it. Uh, and I really appreciate <clears throat> that you're all here. Thank you for coming. Uh, thank you for volunteering your time uh, and your efforts uh, to try to get the United States involved in the second International Indian Ocean Expedition. That is what, what this is all about. And that's what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the second International Indian Ocean Expedition to try to get you oriented to what's going on. And there's a lot going on in the Indian Ocean right now, and we need to get involved. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, talk about the motivation for this workshop, uh, tell you what we're going to try to do here, I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about the second International Indian Ocean Expedition Science Plan, research themes and initiatives to give you the, this context of the planning process and, and what the science is all about. Uh, I'll talk very briefly about the implementation strategy for the international effort. Um, and then I'm going to spend a little time just talking about uh, what countries are involved in IIOE2. And I'll show you just a couple of highlights of some specific activities, and we're going to be talking a lot more later in the afternoon about specific uh, uh, ships going into the water, moorings, all, all the stuff that's going on and has been going on. And then I'll just finish with, I just want to mention to you that, that we, are, we're, we are already working on special issues for the second International Indian Ocean Expedition, and uh, we have one that uh, will be, will, the due date's November 1, and there's going to be multiple volumes. So I'll just tell you a little bit more about that. So, Let's talk about the motivation for this wor workshop. Um, as you know from your agenda, if you read the first paragraph, the primary goal of this workshop is to generate a four-part a, a four workshop report that articulates potential U.S.-led contributions to the second international Indian Ocean expedition. Okay? We're trying to, our task here is to define what we, us, want to do in the Indian Ocean then get together, write proposals, get funded to get in the water in the Indian Ocean and be part of this, this huge expedition that's going on. As you know from looking at the agenda, those four reports are going to revolve around these four themes that were developed uh, by the U.S. Steering Committee. Uh, theme one is boundary fluxes, upwelling, ecosystem, and atmospheric feedbacks. Theme two is monsoon dynamics and impacts on biogeochemistry. Theme three is ventilation, oxygen, carbon variability, and change. And theme four is geological and, and deep ocean biogeochemical processes. So as I said, the real underlying goal is to motivate ideas, collaborations, and ultimately PI-driven research proposals that can be submitted to US agencies to get, get us in the water or in the satellites or on the moorings uh, in, in the Indian Ocean. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to spend a little bit of time. Now, how many people have read the science plan? <laughs> wow, I'm impressed. I expected no hands to go up. Okay, well, you're going to be bored. But everybody else, ha or I, I need to go through some, the, a little bit of the science plan and the research themes and tell you how they're related to our, our themes for this workshop, okay? So uh, that's, uh, that's the science plan. Um, uh, and it was commissioned by SCORE, the Scientific, Scientific Committee for Oceanic Research. Um, and it's available at this website, if I can get this to work. Okay, but all you got to do, if you Google IIOE2, I think that the international website comes up as, as the first hit. So um, the overarching goal of the second international Indian Ocean Expedition is to advance our understanding of interactions among geologic, oceanic, and atmospheric processes that give rise to the complex physical dynamics of the Indian Ocean region and determine how those dynamics affect climate, extreme events, marine biological cycles, ecosystems, and human populations. So as you can see, the, 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 the plan is incredibly broad. And it's completely interdisciplinary. As you, we're talking about geology, oceanography, atmospheric science. And this is in the spirit of the original expedition, which included all, all of those disciplines. And we're, we, we, we're seeking to do that again. 
Um, it, it also includes coastal, open ocean, and even deep sea environments. And we view the science plan, this document, as a red carpet to the, to the, to the world to come to the, inner, to the Indian Ocean and, and do science. And, and if you read this, what you will see is that you can study anything you want and it'll be in the plan. You'll be part of the plan. You can propose anything you want. And I guarantee you that, that it's, it's part of the scope of the expedition. But importantly, the, the plan anticipates focused national plans and priorities. So our goal, we, we can't propose to the NSF that we're going to do all of this. Of course, that's impossible. What we have to do is propose the, to NSF, NOAA, NASA, uh, uh, that what we want specifically. And we need to have, we've been mandated to develop focused plans. Okay? The agencies have told, that, told us that. And so that means that we've we got we to really narrow things down and say this is what we as a community want to do in the Indian Ocean. So I'll, I'll step through these, these, uh, the scientific themes of, uh, of the plan. The first is human impact. So there's a really strong emphasis in this document on, on the role of humans, uh, how they affect the Indian Ocean, and how those effects feed back. Um, uh, and, 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 the, and it emphasizes the, the, how human-induced ocean stressors, things like warming, sea level rise, deoxygenation, acidification, eutrophication, etc., are impacting the, the Indian Ocean and how those are feeding back on people. Okay? And that's really the broader context of the whole plan. Um, and then this is just a, a graphic that shows some of the multiple stressors uh, uh, overlapping and, and issues of warming, acidification, and deoxygenation obviously are really big issues in the Indian Ocean. Um, the second uh, theme, which is related to our theme one, very closely aligned with our theme one, is boundary current dynamics, upwelling variability, and ecosystem impacts, how our marine bio biogeochemical cycles, ecosystem processes, and fisheries in the Indian Ocean influenced by boundary currents, eddies, and upwelling. How does the interaction between local and remote forcing, things like planetary, you know, local forcing versus planetary wave phenomena in the Indian Ocean, which are really important, uh, how these affect the currents and upwelling variability in the Indian Ocean, and how uh, have these processes uh, changed in the past and how will they change in the future? And just a, a few graphics showing these are the incredible reversing northern Indian Ocean currents that reduce reverse seasonally. But we're also talking, we're not just talking about the northern in Indian Ocean, we're talking about the whole basin. We're talking about the Agullis current. Lisa will be talking about uh, some, of the, some of the stuff going on in the Agullis current, uh, this huge boundary current. We're talking about the Lewin current that, that, that's totally anomalous. It flows in the opposite direction uh, of normal uh, western boundary current, eastern boundary currents. And then the complex equatorial current systems. The, the, the Indian Ocean's equatorial current systems are completely anomalous compared to the other ocean basins. Very complicated and they require further study. Um, theme three is uh, monsoon variability and ecosystem response. This is very closely aligned with our theme two. Uh, of this workshop, what factors control past, present, and future monsoon variability? How does this variability impact ocean physics, chemistry, and biogeochemistry in the ocean? What is the effect on ecosystem response, fisheries, and human populations? Uh, and just showing, you know, this, the dramatic changes in the wind field, northeast monsoon, uh, where we have stuff, the wind fields flowing from, from north to, to, to south, uh, and, and the southwest monsoon, and, and the dramatic uh, uh, response of the ocean. These, that shows the temperature field responses. Theme four, circulation, climate variability, and change, which is related, related to our theme three. Uh, how has the atmospheric and ocean circulation of the Indian Ocean changed in the past? How will it change in the future? How do these changes relate to topography and connectivity with the Pacific, Atlantic, and Southern Oceans? What impact does this have on biological productivity, carbon cycling, and fisheries? And this, these graphics show the dramatic warming. The Indian Ocean is ar arguably the fastest warming basin in the world, uh, related to the fact that it doesn't ventilate in, in the north, um, and other things as well. Uh, theme five, extreme events and their impacts on ecosystems and humans. How will climate change impact the frequency and or severity of extreme weather events, tropical cyclones, and tsunamis in the Indian Ocean? How do extreme events in the events in the Indian Ocean impact coastal and open ocean ecosystems? What are the, th the threats of extreme weather events? 
volcanic eruptions, tsunamis, sea level rise, etc., on the Indian Ocean, and just the examples of these heat waves, heat waves in Australia, and that's Cyclone Nargis uh, uh, in the Bay of Bengal. Um, and then finally, theme six, which is a kind of a, a catch-all theme for the Indian Ocean, uh, uh, focusing on the unique geological, physical, biogeochemical, and ecological features of the Indian Ocean. And that relates to both our, our themes three and themes four. What processes control the present, past, and future carbon and oxygen dynamics of the Indian Ocean? And how do they impact biogeochemical cycles and ecosystem dynamics? How do the physical characteristics of the southern Indian Ocean gyre system influence the biogeochemistry and ecology of the Indian Ocean? And finally, how do the complex tectonic and geological processes and topography of the Indian Ocean uh, influence circulation, mixing, and chemistry, and therefore also biogeochemical and ecological processes? And of course, the Indian Ocean, the northern Indian Ocean oxygen minimum zones and their biogeochemical impacts is, is it, are within this theme. These, the remarkable uh, uh, westward propagation of eddies off of the Lewin Current and their biogeochemical impacts fall within this, this theme. And also the remarkable geology and topography of the Indian Ocean, uh, which, impact, which the geology of itself is complicated to triple junction. Uh, so from a geological standpoint, it's extremely interested, interesting. And also the topography we don't really understand, fully understand how the topography, which in many places comes right up to the surface, impacts the circulation and the biogeochemistry. So that's theme six. So there are also, there's, there's three specific uh, research initiatives within the International Indian, second International Indian Ocean Expedition. Uh, the, the first one here is what's called the Eastern Indian Ocean Upwelling Research Initiative. And the planning for that initiative is complete. There's a science plan that's been produced. Um, and it's happening now. There are, are cruises go happening now. Uh, the main focus of, of this initiative is on the upwelling regions that develop seasonally in this part, in the eastern uh, part of the basin off of Java, in particular Sumatra and Northwest Australia and in between. So that's the... Eastern Indian Ocean Upwelling Research Initiative. There's a complementary initiative that's not as far along in terms of development, the Western Indian Ocean Upwelling Re Research Initiative, which is focused in the West. It has nine focal regions, some of which are there's uh, activities going on uh, already starting to happen in terms of, of research. Um, and then finally, uh, there is the year, the year or years of the maritime continent, and, and the IIOE2 is con con uh, co co coinciding with and embracing this initiative, which is also basically happening now. And that's focused uh, in, the, in the region of the maritime continent. And we'll be hearing more about that from Chidong uh, Zhang later uh, today. So those are the research initiatives. Um, so now, uh, uh, and I'll say just a couple of things about the, the implementation strategy. There is an implement, Im implementation strategy, which was uh, commissioned by the IOC. Uh, the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission, um, and, and that is also available on the website or Google IIOE2. And I just want to say a couple things about this. Um, in that the, and the main thing is that this, this plan articulates a governance structure for the second International Indian Ocean Expedition, and that governance structure has been put in place. And it's in, in <laughs> typical of IOC, it's a very complicated governance structure. They love complicated things. But what's great about it is that it is, is by creating this incredibly complicated governance structure, there's a list of the individuals that are part of, this, of the, basically the steering committee of the IIOE2. There's 52 individuals on the steering committee from all over the world. And so that's a real nice, that's a nice consequence of, of IOC creating this governance structure because it automatically is engaging people from all over the world. So that's all I want to say about the implementation strategy. You can get the documents and look at them. Um, I just want to touch on a few, uh, high, uh, just a few things about international participation. Overall, as I said before, there are many countries involved. There's a list of the countries that are involved in some concrete way. They include India, Japan, Germany, Indonesia, China, Australia, Mauritius, USA, UK, Thailand, South Africa, Kenya, Kenya, and other African countries, Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, South Korea, Russia, Iran, France, and Norway. Um, all of these countries are participating at some level in some concrete way, either through the planning, planning process and, and some of the, you know, like India is totally in the water on IIOE2 with many 
activities and cruises happening. Um, and other countries as well. Uh, in particular, uh, China, uh, Japan, um, Indonesia, uh, but they're all involved. And so I just want to touch on a few things. If you want to find out the details about, about what's go going on, again, go to, the, go to the international website. It's hosted by INCOAS. Everything you need to know and all the documents, all the reports, everything are there. Um, the first official cruise actually went out on December 15th, 5th, 2015th, after the 50th anniversary symposium in Goa. Uh, many folks here were there. Uh, the, the Sagar Nidhi sailed and did this, did this transect. And India has multiple subsequent uh, uh, activities that they're undertaking. And they have been inviting international participation. So you should, we have uh, several of our Indian colleagues are here from, from India. I encourage you to talk to those folks and, and see if maybe there's opportunities to, to get involved. Um, uh, the y YMC, Yuri and Ram Rama cruises, there's involvement of Australia and the, and the investigator in the Year of the Maritime Continent, Susan Wiffles, now at Woods Hole, I believe, uh, is, is the chief scientist. Um, the RV, very exciting development, the R RV Ron Brown uh, from no our NOAA ship is going into the Indian Ocean in 2018 to, uh, to occupy the GO ship. Uh, IO7N line, it's going to be working on Rama mooring deployment. I think Mike's going to be talking more about this later and also participating in, in the Year of the Maritime con Continent. There's a basin-wide Korean expedition. I don't have the track here. I think maybe Mike McFadden will mention that as well, that the Koreans are doing. Um, and finally, the Australians also are, bring, are going to be bringing, also bringing the uh, investigator over to do a repeat line, the 110 repeat line that Australia did back in the, in the uh, original expedition. And this will be a fully interdisciplinary uh, effort involving the new Australian ship. Um, some other things, Japanese, the Japan is heavily involved. These are two funded cruises that are linked primarily to the Eastern Indian Ocean Upwelling Research Initiative. They're doing air sea and interaction and nitrogen cycle, biogeochemistry, uh, upper layer circulations. Second leg is biogeochemistry, also uh, looking at Indonesian through flow and its impact in the Indian Ocean, and also related to Ningolo Nino. Nino. I don't know where I am on time, uh, Heather, but I'll be done soon. Uh, the Jap our Japanese colleagues are doing high-resolution modeling, also in support of the, of the upwelling expedition using the Earth simulator. Um, China is heavily involved in the eastern... China and Japan led the development of, this, of the Eastern Indian Ocean Upwelling Research Initiative. China is heavily involved. Uh, they have, they're supporting, supporting Rama deployments. Uh, they're doing their own moorings uh, in this region, and they're uh, also undertaking surveys. This area here is an important area for spawning of the bluefin tuna, so they're, they're helping to support studies of, of that important fishery region. Um, China also is, is engaging in the Western Indian Ocean Upwelling Research Initiative. This is all in the planning stages right now. I don't think there's anything completely concrete, but they're interested in getting involved in Agullah studies. Uh, Mozambique Channel, um, uh, also the uh, southeast Madagascar uh, ridge and shelf area, um, and also even getting involved in, East, in the, in the in, uh, East African coastal uh, current studies. So the China is really active in the Indian Ocean, and they're engaging in the Western Indian Ocean Upwelling Research Initiative. Uh, South Africa also, technically this is not formally part of the Western Indian Ocean Upwelling Research Initiative, but I just got information through Lisa Beal that the Agullis ha has a plan now. They're going to be departing Cape Town uh, in, uh, next month. They're going to be doing hydrographic work in this, between, in this area in the Mozambique Channel. Um, CTDs, they're going to be shallow and deep ocean work with science focusing on shelf ocean interaction and shelf upwelling. And they're even going to be doing bird and cetacean observations. So, the, so South Africa and the, their Department of Environmental Affairs are very much involved and engaged as well. Um, and finally, I think this is the last example I'm going to show. There are many other activities. This is just a little bit of it. This is Norway is involved through the, what they call the EAF Nansen program. And for many, many years, uh, that Norway has been involved in doing studies in the Indian Ocean. And they do a lot of capacity development work. This is their new the new Fritjof Nansen, and, and they are actively engaged, in, and they're uh, working on their collabor collaborations with the second international Indian Ocean expedition. So that's just a, a, a little, I think that was all I had. That was just, that's just a little smattering of some of the stuff that's going on. There's a lot more going on. Um, and and uh, 
And, and one goal we, of this workshop is to try to get everybody here informed enough about what's going on in the expedition that we can, can try to start reaching out to coordinate. Once we decide what we want to do, we, got, we need to be aware of what other countries are doing so, so that we can have some semblance of coordination. Or we can just go do what we want, whatever. But, um, uh, so, and finally, we, as I said, we're already working on special, a special issue for the second International Indian Ocean Expedition. Um, that is the editor team. Um, and the submission deadline is November 1. If you're interested in, in submitting something to this, it's not too late. Even if you can't make the November 1 deadline, because we already have 52 contributions, which means we're automatically rolling into a second volume. Um, and so uh, if you're interested, the, uh, we don't know when the next deadline will be yet. It'll probably be sometime in the spring or early summer. Um, just contact me, and we'll get you in the list. And it's going to be, these are going to be publishing on a first-come, first-served basis, basis. So as we get the papers, as soon as the first volume fills up, we'll just roll into the, into the, next, into the next volume. So that's it. That's all I have to say. Did I, did I use, how did I do on time? I, um, I, I'm happy to take a couple minutes for questions. And I overwhelm.